Okay. Welcome to the November 15th planning board meeting. Today on the agenda, we have review minutes from November 1st. Um, we are going to continue the public hearing for Stone Ridge. And uh, we are going to talk about the White Pines request. And then we're going to wrap things up with a sign by law. So I'll start with the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look at those? Yes. Motion yes. to accept. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have to do oh, we roll, have to do roll call. call. Oh, we got two. Nancy is here. Nancy. OK, so I, Kate. I, Gary. So, oh, I, Liz. I, Marie. I, Wayne. <laughs> I, I, Carl. I, Nancy. Hey, we're all set. I, unanimous. <laughs> all right. Um, next, I am going to reopen the hearing. So um, I make a motion that we reopen the public hearing for us uh, for Stone Ridge Road. Second. Um, I, Kate. All in favor? I, Kate. I, Gary. I, Liz. I, Murray. I, Wayne. I, Carl. I, Nancy. Okay. Um, as always, uh, one at a time. Testimony limited to the issues directly related to the subject matter, um, civility, and let's not get into fights. <laughs> so um, let's see. So I've had some correspondence from town council, and we've had some input from Miss Deanne, the botanist, and you've heard from her too, Mark? I talked to her this morning. Okay. So I edited plan. Okay. To to her liking, it was just editing really the conservation restriction with the plant. Do you want me to? So it, yeah, why don't you go over, over that? You? Yeah. All right. So this is the plan. I didn't give you give you a colored one this time, but it's the same plan. Um, the conservation restriction that um, your chairman was talking about is this this section right here, and there's two pieces to that conservation restriction. Um, the clarification that Misty and Mary Old from Natural Heritage Program wanted to make was that this was called conservation restriction. That's all I called it. Well, it's actually con amended CR number one, and it's in book 7027281. And this little section here, there's another section here that's not, um, not adjacent to our project, but that's CR number two dash A. So that that was the clarification that she wanted to make there. So the other thing that I did on this plan is I showed that there's a 200 foot no cut zone. It really doesn't affect the driveway um, and in the whole parcel. So this is a, it's a locus of the parcel. It shows the CR down here, and I have referred to that as the amended CR number one the, and the CR number two down here. And then this shows a 200 foot. Uh, that, that was, sorry, that is a deed restriction, open space deed restriction. That's a 200 foot buffer here. And then it had a 100 foot no cut zone up on this boundary. Um, this was Henry's property here. So uh, we did go out, Nick and I went out and we reviewed the property and we did find what I'm calling a circle of stones mm -hmm. because there's no, nothing has been submitted that I know of, mm -hmm. any historical reference to it or anything else. So I just called it a circle of stone just so we could show you folks where that is. So it's up here, it's outside of the, air, outside the area of construction of the driveway. Um, so those are, that's the edits that I did, mm -hmm. I put uh, a block up here. I don't know if you guys sign it, but I did put a block up here for your first signatures. Um, and that's the revisions I've done to this plan. I can give you copies of this plan. You have copies of the revisions? Yes. Yeah. So this is, there's four copies. I don't know how many you need, but Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that's just for record, I hope. So those are those are the revisions um, and this discussion that 
I had with Misty Ann is that we did pull this away. She was appreciative of that. I think the only comment she made was that this conservation line, this line right here should be flagged in the field prior to construction. It actually is flagged right now, mm -hmm. um, but that could be uh, flagged better than it is or construction fencing could be put up when it's, when it's constructed. We're just really getting permitting for this. Um, it's a special permit. So what's a special permit? Is that one year, two years? Two years. It's two years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, Richard Bernstein just getting this permitted, not necessarily that he's going to be installing it, but he wanted to get it done. So it's done and he mm -hmm. uh, uh, with purchase and sales. Okay, so um, one question I have is I, I have an email from town council and I'm just gonna read from it, you know, and I guess the question is, would you be game? It sounds like you've already um, incorporated Ms. Deanne's recommendations, which is great. And I saw she sent an email saying that this, she was like the plan now, she's happy with it. So that's good. Um, and I'll just read you what I've got from, from Donna Brewer, town council. And she says, um, um, I recommend that the board require the applicant to mirror the labels and shadings found on the declaration of restrictions plan. Um, in addition, um, if the board grants approval, it, uh, it should condition approval on one, staking the restricted boundary, and two, ordering the disturbance beyond the staked, ordering no disturbance beyond the staked boundary and three, filing all revised plans with um, the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife. Are you game for the for those conditions? Sounds fine, sure. Okay. We've already done three quarters of it, so that's fine. Okay, all right. So um, I'm going to, I did, we, the board did receive input from Henry. Um, so I'm going to read that into the record. Um, this is from Henry Kirschdorfer, who is an abutter to the Stockbridge Planning Board after doing a personal site review visit of this four Stone Ridge Road special permit application to construct a driveway exceeding 500 feet, submitted under section 6.16.1 of the Stockbridge Zoning Bylaw. I have concluded that it has no adverse impact on my concerns that I brought up um, at the November 1 meeting. So that's, thank you, Jennifer. That's that. Um, I have one question about on the plans. I didn't, I couldn't really quite tell what the length of the driveway. 900 feet. It's 900 feet. Okay. All right. Does anyone else have any questions from the board? No. I'm all set. No. Anybody on Nancy, Carl? No. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you know, I mean, having gone there a couple of times now um, to review the site, I can, completely understand why the construction site for the home uh, the plant home is um is where it is and why the driveway is the length of is the, that's being requested is the length that it is um I just would like to underline the fact that you know if we approve this it's a special permit and we're you know, not necessarily establishing some kind of precedent there because I think that 500 foot limit is valuable and um, is something that, uh, you know, is, 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 is an important planning tool for us in the future. Thank you, Carl. <clears throat> okay, any last call for, for any questions? No, okay, so, um, I move that we close the evidentiary portion of the hearing and move to deliberation by the board. Second. Um, I, Kate. I, Gary. I, Liz. I, Marie. I, Wayne. I, Carl. I, Carl. I, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Carl Wait to say second. it so he can say it and then I can say it. <laughs> Identity sorry. gap. I'm sorry, Carl. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> All right, so um, would you guys like me to make a motion including the um, the sure. conditions from town council? Are you good with that? Yes. yes. Okay, um, I move that we approve uh, the request for um, a driveway at Four Stone Ridge Road 
um, condition on uh, one, staking the restricted boundary, two, ordering no disturbance beyond the staked boundary, and three, um, filing all revised plans with the uh, Division of Fisheries and Wildlife. Second. Was that a motion? Yeah, yeah. a second. Any yeah. Dis yeah, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye, Kate. Aye, Gary. Aye, Liz. Aye, Marie. Aye, Wayne. Aye, Carl. Aye, Nancy. Okay. <laughs> You're all set. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Um, Good night. Let's see. So. Oh. Oh, I forgot to ask them to identify themselves. Oh, well. That's right. We know who they are. One is Nick Arianti. Yeah, I've been here for know who they are. Our fault. <laughs> Do we <These> identify protocols. <laughs> we'll make up for it this time. Um, okay, so next up we have um, discussion of the request from White Pines for um, 500 square. That's right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so next up we have the request from White Pines for um, additions of 500 square foot per unit. Um, and this has gone before the select board and um, Patrick asks that we you know, have a discussion and vote on this at the planning board, uh -huh. planning board level. So, uh, are you here on behalf so, of yeah, my White Pines? Bill, Bill Martin, I'm an attorney with Martin and Oliver here for White Pines, and also on Zoom are two of the board members, in fact, one of the um, affected unit owners, um, Gail Stillman and Daniel uh, Freelander. Daniel, I believe, is the board chair. Um, and, and I know you have the letter. We met with the um, select board and, and uh, talked about this. This is actually a little bit of an anomaly in the sense that I think a more current um, uh, zoning permit um, would not be so rigid on its face. Um, I think if you know the White Pines, and I've got some photos here if, if you don't, it's a pretty spread out property with a bunch of estate buildings that were converted into this master plan condominium. And um, the way the permit was granted, it was granted with some pretty restrictive language so that the building inspectors, concerned. and in fact, this is a little bit odd because in the years since the property has been the, the condominium, different building inspectors have interpreted their authority a little differently. So several of the units have in fact built uh, small additions um, with building permits that were issued. And, and I think as you know, with most special permits, um, the building inspector is considered to have a certain amount of latitude in terms of um, sort of inconsequential changes from the original permit. So for example, if some of the materials change or some of the um, uh, facade elements change, you don't have to go back in and get a, an amendment to the special permit. In this case, your building inspector wanted to get a little bit of clarity and some sort of parameters um, from the Board of Selectmen with regard to what would be a reasonable use of that discretion. And speaking with the building inspector and speaking with town council, um, we came up with essentially a 500 square foot limitation per unit. Now, that doesn't mean that each and every unit's gonna have um, an addition put on it, um, but it means that if, if a, a particular unit owner wants to um, add a deck or enclose the existing deck, that that can be done uh, with the issuances of a normal building permit. Of course, you know, with regard to that, you know, all of the side yard setback building code requirements are all satisfied. The other thing that I think is important to understand is within the condominium regime, there's even another layer on top of that because before anyone can modify any of the buildings, they have to go through, and the board members can talk about this in a little more detail, a, a, a very rigid, architectural and design review process so that the condominium association itself through its board of uh, uh, through its uh, trustees can decide whether or not putting a deck on one of these buildings is in is in character with 
the overall design and aesthetic of the condominium regime. So they police that themselves. They've been very diligent about that. There's a there's a there's a there's a very um, well established process. And then of course, if you own a condominium, you can't just put an addition on it because if you put a deck on, you're putting that in common land. So you need to go to the next step and get what's called a limited common area agreement from the condominium association to get per permission to sort of ex you know exercise exclusive dominion over that space. The, the, these um, these buildings are by no means, you know, sort of your typical cookie cutter kind of medium where all the buildings are the same. Um, in fact, quite the opposite. All these buildings are very, very different, very different styles, very different architecture. And so some of the buildings, you know, had a deck on one side, but not on the other. Um, and folks have wanted to have some outdoor living space and some other things. So this was a mechanism to really just try to create some consistency and simplicity in terms of coming back with these requests. In fact, um, uh, there was a discussion with the, uh, and, and you may all remember my, my, my partner, John Goble, who passed away, very involved in all this kind of medium stuff, particularly this property. And, and everyone had this um, sort of um, institutional memory that there was a board meeting at one point with the Board of Selectmen where, in fact, this was discussed and agreed upon, and then if people went back to the minutes and couldn't find it. So um, that's really what prompted uh, uh, Ned Baldwin to suggest that through town council, we ought to formally do that with a piece of correspondence that can now be in the file with some minutes. Um, obviously, since you all as the planning board, you know, have a, have a role in this, um, the board of selectmen, and I think probably one of, one of you all suggested that it come to you to sort of hear about it firsthand. Um, what I didn't want to do, and, and, and I didn't, and I don't think it's, it's appropriate to do, is sort of slip into kind of a particular project sort of discussion because this really isn't intended to be um, an amendment to the special permit. In fact, what prompts it, I think, is Gail's, um, you know, she's actually the person who sort of prompts this thing because she went to pull the building inspector, and that's when Ned said, you know, let's tap the brakes and figure this out. Um, but her addition in particular, I think it's probably the easiest example where the existing building has a deck on one side, um, but not on the other. And architecturally, this deck is just gonna balance out the building. So we think it should be a, a, a pretty straight ref forward referral back to the Board of Selectmen, ask for your, um, for your uh, approval of our request. And again, the Selectmen um, um, talked about you know, being being sort of specific in terms of what I've asked for in the letter, which is um, to say that we're going to ask for one you know one time addition per per unit owner, and that's that's really at this point intended to be forever for that unit. One of the questions is, you know, is if the unit then sells, can the next person put on another 500 square feet? And the answer to that question is really kind of no. Um, but, so I just want to understand. Yeah. So you're you're basically asking for how many units are there? Um, uh, there's 60 something units. How many units are there total? 68. Uh, the, six, so you're asking units. for 500 square feet for 68 units? No, no, not, 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 likely not ever. Um, this isn't, we're going to go around and put 500 square feet on 68 uh, units. But that's, that's yeah. the way it would be set up basically. Well, but it's, it's, it's a blanket permit. It, theoretically. To, uh, a blanket permission. Well, excuse to, me. Carl, one at a time, okay? I mean, you know, theoretically, that's true mathematically, um, but practically speaking, are all 68 unit owners going to want to add a deck? Many of them already have a deck. Uh, I, think okay. it's, I think it's particularly yeah, unlikely that, that that would ever happen. Carl? But um, anyway, you're asking for a blanket permission for, um, you know, 500 square foot additions to the, these existing properties. Well, I, I'm, asking, I'm asking for the building inspector to be given the green light to sure. exercise the discretion that a building inspector really already has. Um, and that with respect to any special permit that's ever been issued, it is very unusual for the project to be built exactly in accordance with the original conceptual plans and designs that were presented to a zoning board. There are okay, always, so I there are always modifications along the way. Um, and so in this particular case, 
we think that um, giving the building inspector the ability to have that discretion um, explicitly makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that's, you know, as I know the, the history of, of how uh, special permits have been handled in this town and this type of thing, that just is not how it's been handled. So I think I understand what you're asking for. And at this point, um, I'd like to, you know, give the board a chance to talk about it, have a discussion amongst themselves. Sure. And, um, you know, and, and take it from there. So first of all, does everybody understand, you know, that this is 500 square feet for, per, per 68 units? Yeah. Okay. Can I just say that, excuse me, that, um, excuse me, please, oh, sorry. please, please wait. Um, one thing, I, I'm not sure that everybody is familiar, is as familiar with the property as, as they are. And um, I know the property a little bit, but from my standpoint, I think um, it would be good to have a site visit. Yeah, definitely. Are we giving a special permit or is the select board giving a special permit or are we just <clears throat> discussing this to give our opinion to the select board? Who? Give our opinion to the select board. That's what yeah. we're doing now. Yeah. Okay. I, I have some photographs that get sort of a site, you know, some, some aerial photos and some photos of the building. So if you can uh, please just give the board, a, excuse me. If, if you'd want, I mean, you asked for a site visit. I wondered if some photographs might be helpful. I'd like sure, to. I'd like yep, to. bring them up. Thank you. Um, and, and just to be clear procedurally, there's no special permit application. This is, this issue is really Showing the a select board decision. And frankly, it's not even really a select board decision. It's, it's, it's the building inspector asking his boss, the select board, for guidance. The reality is the building inspector theoretically already has this discretion and the building inspector through town council has simply asked his boss, the select board, for some guidance in terms of how they would like him to exercise that discretion. That's really what this is. So it's not a special permit application. It's not an amendment to the special permit. It's simply trying to create some clarity in terms of- We should. Building inspector, um, how how he should exercise his discretion. Did they have yeah. an opinion? The uh, select board. Uh, the select board seemed very favorable, but wanted to give you an opportunity to weigh in. It, I, mean, I know some of them because I've been there, um, and some, a few of them do have decks already. I mean, it's not like we're asking to to rebuild those decks. Yeah, but it doesn't already. say that if they already have a deck, because there's, does that mean they can't? Why couldn't they just get another 500 feet? There's nothing that says Yeah, can. I just, to me, my concern is that, first of all, it's it's not just a deck, it's potentially an addition. So mm -hmm. you've got private septic there. So now you've got, what is that? Um, 500 times 68, 34,000 square feet, potentially, um, right near wetlands, you know, so you've got, I, I would just, you know, I did talk to Patrick about this, and I'd want to do a site visit and just get a better sense of of the lay of the land there. Um, You'd still be bound by your bedrooms with the septic. I don't know. You know, that's something I mean, I'd want to. I mean, you hmm. you're still bound by that. You couldn't create another. Well, but if you build another bedroom, then you know. Well, I think what Wayne's saying is you couldn't. Right. Well, not legally, you couldn't. Right. That doesn't mean yeah. you wouldn't use it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to assume that they're going to break the law. I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'm just saying that, you know, in light of what's there with this, this septic system. Yeah. I mean, 500 square feet, I think, you know, one of the things we have to ask is that substantial. And, um, you know, that's not quite the size of, the room, of this room, but it's, um, it's a pretty big, pretty big space. So, you know, potentially you've got, um, this is an area that, uh, you know, it was sort of designed and um, it was a David Rothstein project. And, you know, I'm also, um, you know, what about a Butters and so on? You know, there are neighbors. Um, Jen had her hand up when you get a chance. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say that, um, I work for the building inspector. 
And we have, when people come and have wanted to do something at White Pines, we have had them get a special permit from the selectmen because the very first special permit was when they built the um, White Pines property. And the people that live there do not own the land. Right. So there are no setbacks like down the street here, there are setbacks. There aren't any there. And the reason he asked the selectmen to basically amend the old uh, special permit is because 500 square feet isn't that big. And instead of every time somebody asking to do something there, they had to get a special permit and everybody thought it was pretty crazy to have to do that. So um, Ned talked to our town council, our town council talked with- Attorney Martin. <laughs> no, Martin. Mr. Martin, yeah. Attorney Martin. <laughs> and, um, and the three of them, plus the selectmen, talked about letting people do 500 square feet Why? without getting a, a special permit. If they want to do more than that, they probably have to, you know, get a special permit. I guess my question is, why didn't you just, you know, a special permit is not that big a deal in this town. Why didn't you just apply for a special permit? Because the problem is that I can't apply for a special permit for the condominium. Each individual unit owner mm -hmm. who wants to put on a deck, okay. unlike most anybody else in town who has plenty of space, has, has within their community, remember this is a closed community as a condominium, has the permission by definition of their neighbors because the condominium association has a much more rigid review process than a neighborhood would. Neighborhood neighbor doesn't have any say in it, mm -hmm. but the condominium association has very rigid rules. So as to what the neighbors think, the neighbors control, they don't just think. And then you come through that layer and we get to the building inspector and the building inspector is like, well, we can't do a blanket special permit amendment to amend the whole schmeal mm -hmm. because then we are big numbers then we don't have designs, we don't have any idea. We have a unit owner here, a couple of years later, maybe a unit owner there, the next one. And it just seemed to be this but painfully you, burdensome task. But aren't you it asking- It didn't make any sense. But you're asking for a blanket, a no, blanket- I, I'm thing. simply asking for the building inspector to be able to exercise the discretion that I think he wants to exercise, but feels in an environment where you've got a board of selectmen who are who are engaged and who are his boss, wants to say, look, I'm not sure that I should exercise this discretion this way. I want to get your okay. Goes through town council. Town council says that's consistent with the way things roll. The board of selectmen, at least in their initial reaction to this, were, you know, that makes a lot of sense. It doesn't require a lot of extra effort on people's parts. You have the unbelievable protection, and maybe Dan, Dan can talk about this a little bit, of how a condominium works. I mean, a condominium is a really, really rigid organization. Okay, so it I have a question. We're gonna design, we're gonna, Excuse we're gonna, me. I'd like to hear him finish. Can he finish? We're gonna talk, he's, about, we're gonna talk he's, about He's getting a lot of airtime here. We're gonna talk about timing. We're gonna talk about the manner of construction, how all of it's gonna affect your neighbors, how it's gonna fit into the overall aesthetic of the condominium. That's really part of what would happen in a special permit application. And of course, if you drill down to what your what your findings would be if there was a special permit. Okay, excuse me now, I'd like to ask you a question. Okay. Um, look, sorry, Wayne, but he's had a lot of time no, to I speak. Mean, you, you don't allow him to finish, so go ahead. He's, he's having quite a bit of time speaking, so I'd like to ask a question. Are you willing to provide a site visit? Just a simple question. You know, I, I, we're going back to the Board of Selectmen in January, so how about, December 6th. So how about, how about a joint site visit with the select board? I, I don't think that they asked for that, frankly. And, and, and you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, you, you're not, I think, I, I think, with respect, you know, you're not voting on anything other than making a recommendation, hmm. okay? Right. And so, and your recommendation isn't really binding, so. I think it's you know, reasonable to allow people to have a site visit who are interested, and I'm just asking you, yes or no, will you allow those who are interested on the board to have a site visit? 
Sure, but I, but I will tell you that I'm going to ask the board of selectmen at their next meeting to make a decision because That's right. because That's right. and, and whether you whether you as a body have made a recommendation or not, I'm going to ask them to make that decision because I don't think this frankly is a heavy lift. I really don't. You have you have the the the, the, the request from your building inspector. You have the negotiated approval and recommendation from your town council. You have very positive feedback from your select board. Your role here is to make a recommendation to the select board. I think that you can do that based upon the information you have. Your recommendation may be, we don't want you to do it because we think there ought to be a site visit or we think there ought to be a special permit application or whatever. But I think you tonight can make a recommendation to the select board. So there's just one part that I disagree with you about, and that's that um, these are elected boards. The planning board is elected. The select board is elected. And the recommendations that you have are people who work for the town. So what I would like is for there to be some respect for the elected boards here. And I don't know, you say you seem to feel that the select board is all for this. I don't I know that. All for it. I didn't say they were all for it. I said that you know, this whole process has been, and again, I, I, I am on a lot of volunteer boards, okay? I understand the work that volunteer boards do. I spent a lot of time in my town volunteering, but I also have a great regard for our town employees who work really hard and do their job, okay? And so I've got a building inspector who's been very diligent about this, who's been very engaged. I've got town council who's been very engaged. I've got town administrator who's been engaged, and I've got a whole lot of effort into this, okay? I, I don't mind if you want to do a special a site visit. All I'm saying is, I don't think it needs a site visit. This is a property, if your concern is one deck, okay? I, I don't think there's any real concern about that. Your concern sounds like, well, this is gonna open Pandora's box and we're gonna have you know, 500 square foot additions on 68 units and so you would be against it. You know, I don't know that sitting the property is gonna change your view on that. Um, so, I, you know, I would ask you to make some movement tonight and we'll go back to the Board of Selectmen and we'll either say the planning board's decided it wants to do a site visit so it hasn't acted yet or not. I don't know. Okay, I think I understand and I, I really do think at this point it's a discussion of the board um, and we can, you know, figure out um, what we think is reasonable here and we will make a recommendation. Okay. Gary. Oh, I'd like to hear from the condo uh, folks. Okay. Um, hi, um, thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. Um, this is Gail Solman. I sit on the board. Um, I just want to point out a couple of things uh, that we have uh, White Pines, um, as Mr. Mr. Martin um, stated, has a very rigid um, evaluation of when somebody wants to make a change to their unit. We have an architectural committee, which is being morphed into a building committee, which makes sure that the changes that are being made are consistent with the overall, um, the overall aesthetic of the community and has the neighbor's approval. Once it goes to the architectural committee and they approve, it then has to go before the board. So there is a two level process. Uh, we have very strict guidelines in terms of how things look, in terms of the paint that people are using, in terms of what they build. I mean, if there, I, I heard that there were comments that, um, you know, there was concern about the wetlands. Well, if, if there was an issue where somebody was building, they would have to go before the conservation land, I'm assuming, committee. Um, to get approval there, but there, there is strict approvals. And the other thing I just wanted to add was that there are several different sub developments within White Pines so that a number of them would not even be able to build decks. In the last decade, I think there's only been six, uh, six decks built or six additions that required special permits. I don't have the exact number, Mr. Martin, you have that, but we're talking about a handful a projects that's been done over a decade. So we just want to afford our owners um, an easy way to facilitate something that's going to beautify our community. Um, 
Dan, uh, he is part, he is the chair of the board. Um, I'm sure he wants let, to let add some comments. Let me add just two things. Uh, if you've been to White Pines, uh, two of the buildings, the carriage barn and the uh, stables, which are <clears throat> from the 1880s, are basically stacked apartment units. They could never have decks because they're in multiple levels. So 24 of the 68 units would never have access to this. Um, the community has been very strict and, and with septic in particular, we're very particularly concerned um, not to overburden our, our internal septic system. That means the addition of, of bathrooms and, and bedrooms. So we have our own criteria to protect the nature of the community. Um, but we, we've found over the last several years, the last dozen years, <clears throat> really consistency when who, where the authority lies. Um, once the community, once, once the, the, um, the town says that uh, this, the building inspector says this is okay, and then, then the community has to decide if we want to do it. But um, we've had different, the ground keeps changing. We want to know what the rules are from the town of Stockbridge. We want to enforce them with the town of Stockbridge. Um, and we don't want to be a burden to the planning process um, or the permitting process of the town of Stockbridge. I'd like to pass around. This is a set of plans for the deck, which is sort of instigated this whole thing. And, and, I, and I will tell you, seen a lot of contractors build a lot of decks and a lot of houses. I've never seen a set of plans like that that were required by the board to build a deck. I mean, that, that, those, that, that set of plans, you could be building a commercial building. In the level of demand that the association <laughs> unit owners is, is, is honestly fairly remarkable. Um, and, and again, you know, that's, that's within the community of White Pine. So I think it's, you know, it's fair here. So these type of plans would be for, I mean, everybody would have to be as detailed as this yeah, on. And that, that's on, how you get through their building process. I mean, they're, they're it's building It's not that process. this is just one great big super plan yeah, that all of them would have they're to. Built, and, each, and of course, this is not, this, these buildings are not, you, you know, they're not uniform. So every single modification to the exterior is going to go through this, you know, this battery of review, which, you know, that's, that's the, that's what you sign up for when you, when you, when you buy, buy into a condominium, you buy the fact that the condominium association is going to govern, you know, the aesthetics of the exterior building. They're not going to let you build in the common space unless they're perfectly happy that the construction is right. The design is right. The fit is right. The color, the quality, the character. Oh, those are all the criteria that go into deciding whether a special permit would, would be in harmony with the neighborhood and all those sorts of findings. So it seems to me that when you're talking about this kind of um, discretion from the building inspector, you know, it just, it just makes sense. Um, okay. Why are we having this? Why, why, why are we being approached with this question? Because um, as far as I, I mean, why does the, uh, uh, I, 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 kind of get, getting the gist that it's difficult, but I mean, why can't we just, I mean, we're not talking about multiple proposals. Um, um, I mean, why can't this just simply be, you know, case by case as we always do? It's not like we're overloaded with special permit requests. So I guess I just don't understand. There's no burden here for us to review these requests. Um, it's, a, it's a burden on an applicant. Um, and and, and how so, how so? It, it, it's it's a it's you know it takes engineering and legal effort to go through a special permit process. There's also the potential appeal process. The abutters, you know, I'm not. I suppose the a, 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 you know neighboring kind of an immune owner is technically. A, I don't know if they even are a butter in that context. In any event, um, you know, the simple fact of the matter is, I think, like quite frankly, there may have been previous building inspectors over the years here who have in fact issued building permits for other work along the way. So this whole thing came up with Ned basically saying, you know, I just want to know, you know, what the rules are. And, and when that discussion ensued, it became very clear that, that it felt like there should be a minimum threshold that says anything below this 
should not have to require the formality of a special permit application because there's already so many safeguards built. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Martin. At this point, I think um, we've, we've heard from you and your applicant and your team. And what I would like is for the board to have a chance to discuss this, discuss this without interruptions. Um, and then I think we can probably, you know, fairly quickly come up with with uh, some input input for the select board. Thank you again for your input. We appreciate it. And now at this point, I would like to, the board to be able to, to deliberate. Okay, thank you. All uh, right, so. Hey, uh, uh, um, excuse me, Kate, um, one more question. Um, yeah. How old are those buildings at the White Pines? What 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 era? That's like early 1970s. I think right? it, was, it was built in 1984, I think. Oh, okay, fine. fine. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm interested to hear hear from the board at this point. I think it would be good if we could just have a, a low key discussion. And um, you know, what are your thoughts? Well, I guess I'm going to start. I, don't, I think the 500 uh, square feet seems like a lot, but it doesn't mean that every single one's going to be 500 square feet. And from my, what I heard from the condo association folks, 24 of those yeah. can't even have those. So there are 44 that could. So there's 44 that could, and there's already some that already have theirs. Um, and based on from what I can hear from the condo folks, um, they seem to have a pretty good handle on what they're what they what they're doing, and they don't want their septic system to um, be overloaded by adding. Um, 48 bathrooms. So um, I would think it's probably, I would recommend that it's all right. I'm wondering, my, my question, I guess, would be I, I don't disagree with you. I'm a little concerned about would this be able to be turned into a, a room? Is it a deck or is mm -hmm. it a room? Mm -hmm. And if it's a deck, I'm okay. But if it's a room, you know, some, some people put decks on their houses mm. and then a few years later yep. they put up screens mm. and then the screens turn into glass and the next thing you know there's heat in there and it becomes a room. So if we could, if it could be had with the understanding that that wouldn't happen, mm. I would be for it. Well, well Liz, I, 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 I sort of second your um, thought there. There's an amazing amount of pressure. I mean, when I deal with historic preservation issues, um, there is an amazing amount of pressure on on property around the bowl for people to turn you know just make it bigger make it you know uh more lavish and 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 i uh you know i i i i i, I my my question still is like why can't this just go through you know our regular permitting process like we're not overwhelmed by it and um and and you know i don't think the 500 square foot limit is 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 is, is an unreasonable thing but i mean um I, I i just don't even understand why this question is coming up like why don't we you know approve your deck fine go ahead you know like the next person who wants something you know they want to put an addition onto their place you know like come to us Right. Uh, yeah. well, they, they wouldn't be coming to us. Right, right. They're going to the board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and they're also going through an HOA board or, you mm -hmm. know, a home association board, which is right. really tough. I mean, no, if, you I look up, if you look up rules and regulations of, of these associations, you're very happy you live in your this own This is home. why I don't have a problem. <laughs> right. Marie? Well, I think if Ned still has discretion over what's legal to you know, to build and what's legal in our town. I think that's certainly a protection that, that we have and we don't necessarily have to approve every single thing. If you have the board and you, and you have Ned saying you can do this or you can't because of the law in our, in our town, I think, you know, we're pretty well protected from this being a crazy plan and just a blanket, yes, you can do anything you want. I, I think I would go for saying, yes, let's, with Ned's discretion, be able to permit this and their board. Okay. All right, Wayne. When the 
condominium association goes through their process is the neighbor considered and is he considered as an interestingly uh, a limited common area agreement is required and, and in a condominium a limited common area agreement is an agreement that says a particular unit owner is going to get to exercise exclusive control over some common land next to his property you can't have one of those without the common without the unit owners that abut those units approving it it's veto power it's complete veto power it's not even up to the board so when you have a situation where an abutting condominium unit owner would want to put on a deck this person would have to get a limited common area agreement saying i get to control this space the person on the other side of that common wall has absolute veto power to say no thank you uh, thank you that's what i was that's what i was curious about i think that's a big time protection for folks that are in the condominium complex i don't think it represents a uh, a concern for the town as far as it being abused i think the fact that somebody that is owners in this place would be the watchdogs for an abuse with another room. Their septic system would be the biggest reason for having strict control over that because it's so hugely expensive to alter if you have to. I think the reason it's needed from what I'm hearing is that there has been inconsistency. The, the different building inspectors that have been in town have viewed these things differently. They're asking for commonality in this condominium development. I don't think it's unreasonable to have something that says, yes, as we go forward, this is the way these things are gonna be viewed. And the building inspector provides our protection for the town. The selectmen provide our protection for the town. So I, I don't think this is an unreasonable request and I would support their request. Nancy? I, I agree totally with Wayne and um, especially Elizabeth when she said that, oh, you lost me. I lost you. Oh no. We can hear you. We can see you. Oh, we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Um, no, I, I think it's the condo association has like much stricter rules than the town of Stockbridge ever would have. And I think they've got it covered. And Ned being the building inspector, he also has to answer to the mass building codes too. So Ned's on top of it. I think the association's on top of it. And, and I don't have a problem with making it a blanket thing so they don't have to come back every time they want to put a deck on someone. So um, thank you, Nancy. Um, so my concern is with the size 500 square feet and that the um, I would recommend um, 250 or 300 square feet and that um, the wording be clear that this be a deck and not a room. Um, there's proximity. I mean, I think it's reasonable to compromise here. You've got the proximity to the, to the lake, to the wetlands that feed directly into the lake. Um, so those are, those are my concerns. And I, I agree with Carl. I mean, this, this pressure um, that we're seeing around the lake, um, you know, for bigger and bigger, and a lot of these units sit empty most of the year. That doesn't represent sustainability. It's just a use of resources, and they're just sitting there unused. Um, and you know, I just, I think this is, this is something that is easily handled as a special permit. Um, I don't see a problem with that process, and that's frankly what has. Um, the oversight of boards um, has what has made Stockbridge the place that many of you want to to be and 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 live in in the summertime. So, um, you know that those are my concerns. I think 500 square feet is is just 
too big. I'd like to see something smaller and something that is clearly um, defined as, as for a deck space only so that we're not looking at overloading that septic system. And frankly, um, you know, if you enlarge the septic system, it's a private septic system, you're still, you know, you've got the impact to the watershed. So I think I have a sense of where everybody is. Um, and Can I speak still? Yeah. I hear absolutely no compelling argument that we should do a carve out against um, our existing bylaw um, um, for this, which is a situation where, you know, I mean, like you, the devil's in the details. I mean, it's gonna be case by case. I mean, come to the come to the select board, you know, apply for a special permit. What's the problem? Okay, so I don't, you know, I think it looks to me like we've got, um, um, if we can just do a straw poll, it looks to me like we've got Wayne, uh, Marie, Gary, and Nancy in favor of this, of this Liz, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Liz was more on the fence. You're more Which on the fence. Which is a recommendation. But I guess yeah, it's just a recommendation. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, I have, I have some concerns and clearly Carl has some concerns as well. So well, suggestion. Yeah. If we could, um, well, we can just vote and do that. But I think that everybody's um, um, concerns, if you will, if you could just bullet them for yeah, the select right. board. I can do that. And then I, they, yeah. can, they yeah. can run with it. Yeah. I, it's up to you guys. If you want to vote, we can. If you want, I can just bullet it. Can I, ask, can. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Where did the 500 square feet come from? <laughs> just out of curiosity. I think it came from Ned. Came from um, Ned? Came from Ned. All right. Um, yeah. I think it, it was his, it was, you know, this, this, this whole process really starts with me. Okay. So it wasn't based on an existing deck. No, no, it was it's okay. related. It's related to the historic preservation okay. commission of which I'm the chair and, um, and, and additions to properties of, um, of significance, which none of these properties are at this point, um, you know, over 500 square feet are, are actually su subject to review, um, We've never not approved one, by the way. Because I think it would be really important for the homeowners association, the trustees, to come up with the number that, that's, you know, you have decks that are there already that would work for you. Maybe you don't want 500 square foot decks. They are huge. You know, maybe you want something that's not so, you know, so intimidating to your neighbor. And maybe that's something to look at. And that's that's partly why I asked for a site oh. visit to get a better sense of, of what is existing on the property now. So it's, you know, look, I'm not going to ask again. So we'll just proceed to making a recommendation to the select board. But um, yeah, I mean, it just 500 square feet is huge. Yeah. Wayne? How will this be communicated to the select, when, select board? I'm going to just write it up <clears throat> based, on, based on everybody's comments and send it along to them. And I can ask them to post it so that you know you can all see please i yeah. think we need to vote on it on a recommendation that we're going to send to the select not if it's just comments there? with the comments on the um Otherwise, excuse me jennifer no on the, we need to vote on what okay go ahead well they asked for our recommendation they asked for our recommendation but we don't have to go down it. yeah no i touched well, no, I, I have no problem with voting on it i touch base with mike and we don't have to vote on it we can just as we did with the with the downtown plan, we can just write it up. But it's up to you guys. If if you as a board want to vote on it, we can. I don't feel strongly about it one way or the other. <clears throat> I'm good. If you're gonna send that to the yeah. select board or CC us on it or whatever. Okay. okay, so I think we're all set. Thank you very much. I'm I'm not clear on what your recommendation right. is gonna be. Um, so we're just going to give them our comments. So I think Jennifer Individual makes a comments. point. Jennifer makes a point because if if we're going to make a recommendation from the board, should it be a, a voted on recommendation? Well, you know, again, it's a, we can vote on this or we can provide them with input in the form of comments. Well, let's vote on it and say, you know, four people are comments. for it, three people are against it. These are the reasons. 
There you go. I mean, can you do that? So they know yeah. that it's not like a unanimous and all of us are mm -hmm. for this, mm -hmm. but we thought about it and we have reasons for why we voted the way we did. Right. And and they can know that some of, you know, some of us were not for this and, and some of included. us were. Sounds yep. good, they're included. That's fine, yeah. that's fine, that works. Does that work for you, Liz? Yeah. Carl? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy? Yes. Okay, all right. Well, we gotta do I. Yeah, oh, right. so it was just a, okay. it's just an informal vote. We don't have right. to, yeah. So who's in favor of the proposal? I didn't, uh, so I don't want to, what did Carl do? I want to, did you say yes, Carl? I said, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> She's not overwhelmingly. So the proposal. Well, I think that's, yes. Whatever, let's get it uh, over with. Yeah, can let's make it clear what we're voting. What, what's the proposal? Right. Tell us and we'll. You know, so that way. they are asking for 500 square feet per unit. Well, go with the whole thing. Our proposal. What is the our proposal? proposal. No, our, 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 just that. The our they're asking for the ability to add on 500 square foot per unit to be approved by the building inspector. Is that what you're asking for? We're asking for the building inspector to be able to exercise his discretion up to 500 square feet. Yeah. And I will tell you that discretion means that in a particular context, the building inspector could still say, I think this one needs a special permit for some other reason. Um, this is a matter, this is really not the formality of a green light, red light. It's giving the building inspector some clarity in terms of these are the bounds within which we want you to exercise your discretion. You still have discretion, you still have judgment, you still have to apply all the other things that go on. And you could, you know, to your example, if he, if he thought that the way this thing was coming out, it's looking like a bedroom, smells like a bedroom, feels like a bedroom, he may say no. Um, and, and that would still fit within what we're talking about because all we're talking about is giving the building inspector the discretion that has been exercised by previous building inspectors without asking. I yes, think, no, thank, you. So. thank you very much. I think we get the idea. And it's so, up to 500 feet, right? Uh, it yeah, doesn't have right, to be 500 right. feet. So it's at the building, right. So what we're voting on is that, that at the building. So let's start look at it and say, ah, 500 feet's too big. Let's do yeah. okay. 250. Right. I mean, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. So at the building, what we're voting on is that at the building, dis uh, building inspector's discretion, um, they can add on up to 500 feet. Up to 500 feet, feet of deck. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so right. uh, I'm an A. No. Um, Gary? No. Liz? No, not up to 500. Marie? Yes. I Wayne? Wayne, yes. Nancy? Yes. Okay, all set. Okay, on to um, the next agenda yep. item, which is... Um, the sign by law draft. <laughs> this should be more fun. <laughs> break out the champagne. I'm sorry? He said break out the champagne. Oh, okay. <laughs> break out the. <laughs> All right. So, um, where we left off with this at the last meeting, um, we had, was it the last meeting or the meeting mm -hmm. before? We had voted basically to move ahead with it. And um, I think that at the last meeting, we got a little bit sort of into the weeds. And my feeling is that I know it's not perfect, but I think we made headway on it. And um, I'm thinking that we should, um, you know, for now, vote on it. And it won't happen until the town meeting. There's a town warrant. So we have a little bit of time in case, you know, any big brilliant ideas come along. <laughs> but I'm thinking we should, you know, vote on that and wrap it up and give it a rest. Okay. It'll still have to go before, you know, it will still have to go through the process of public hearing, go to the select board and then come back to us. I think I always can't remember the exact process, but there's that back and forth yeah. there. Gary, do you remember the exact process? Um, I think you do the. Uh... Select board and then plan back to planning board. Yeah. What do we do? Did we send it to the uh, select board first? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so we give them an opportunity to look yeah, at it. Right. And then I think they send it to the town council, right? 
Well, uh, she's already Attorney she's Kim. already reviewed it. Okay. Yeah. She's and then we have a public it. hearing. Right. Yeah. So town council has reviewed this and she's fine with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready to sort of you know wrap it up. But I you know happy to hear from you guys too. Of course. I'm ready to wrap it up. <laughs> Put a ball on it. <laughs> Make a motion to uh, approve to move it forward. Second. There you go. All in favor? Aye, Aye. Gary. Aye, Aye. Aye Kate. <laughs> oh, I'm Marie. I'm sorry. Aye, Wayne. Okay. We're good. All right. Anything else? I think we're ready to. Motion to adjourn. Aye, second. <laughs> um, I, I, I oh. wanted to ask something yeah. Yeah. before we adjourn. There, there's a couple of things that I'd like to bring up. Um, I'd like the board to have Kara come back to us to report on her work, which included uh, open space and parking in the town. And also, I know there was emails going back and forth with the Conservation Commission about the, um, you know, the LPOD thing. And if we could have a meeting with the CONCOM or somebody from the CONCOM come to our meeting or we could go to their meeting because um, Donna Brewer, I'm reading from my notes, I'm sorry. Um, Donna Brewer had written a letter um, from our town council to Sally Underwood Miller and said the simplest solution to this problem, I got it written down here, would be the simplest solution would be to amend the LPOD bylaw to require applications for special permits in the LPOD to be submitted to the Conservation Commission in addition to the Planning Board so the Conservation Commission can provide comments and recommendations to the Planning Board. So it's not just us coming up with it, but if we could have a discussion with that, I'd like to see those two things come before our board, please. So LPOD, Nancy? And then an update from Kara. Yeah, I had Kara to come to see what, I know she was working on the open space for a while. She had written up this big report and I don't think that's ever been brought before our board. I know it was an email for it, but I don't think out, people out in the world know about it. I don't think she's working on the open space, but I will, you know, I will look into it and um, um, I'll, I'll find out what the status, status of her work is. Okay. And, um, and you said the parking plan too? The parking yeah, she had she had come up with a couple solutions for parking, which you know, just you know, threw them out there. It's just what she came up with. It's nothing that we even talked about for parking lots, but we've never talked about it. As far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned, I know Kara has mentioned it, and we're oh, we'll talk about it, and then we never do. So I, I can like definitely, it. yeah, I can definitely get that on the agenda for an update. I think she, I think they finalized plans, so we'll definitely get that down. Is that something oh, well, that other so people we'll have her come in, right? Mm -hmm. Or zoom in or something, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, well, okay. So, you know, Nancy mentioned the LPOD, and um, I don't know who, there's a massive amount of, of earth that has moved across from the, uh, the causeway. I mean, there's like a whole hillside that's gone. So, from across which from side of the causeway? causeway? Looking towards uh, like the lakeway. Part. I know, but so from the south side of like the Like if you're looking at the causeway or on, at the town beach, directly across, there's like nothing but gray, like the whole huh. side oh, of from, the hill. Oh, I know, the, the, the blasting they did there. Oh. But I don't know where is it, where where is it? it who is it's it? It's that one where they were putting in the, um, the swimming pool. Oh. I think it was 37. Or um, that's 82, 82 Interlaken? Yeah. Yeah, the one that come down the steep, steep, steep hill. Oh yeah. my, oh my goodness. So, oh, I don't know if they were supposed to. I know that you know we approved the house, and we didn't approve for the swimming pool. If that's what, if that's no, what you guys were moved up, for the lap it got moved up the hill, yeah, right? It wasn't were, down near the lake uh, anymore. That's okay. the one. All right then. Well, then I guess it rests with the conservation commission. And they had to, yeah, mm -hmm. they had to make a road down there. Well, they were they were doing a road and then they were blasting as part of the whole thing. I mean, it, it looks like the, devastation. It's quite something. Does CONCOM have the ability to visit that site? Yeah, they already have. At their oh. discretion, like they can monitor yeah. that. I was a nay on that one. And are they, <laughs> are they, I don't know what they're going to do. I just, I just know that 
I brought it to their attention. And, um, there are no, the, they did a site visit. Any trees that are left do. But if you haven't seen yeah. it, you should just either go to the town beach and look almost straight across a little diagonally maybe, or just go to the causeway and, and look across because it's just an expanse of gray. It's ledge. It's basically yeah. a ledge that's just been blasted, blasted oh. away. And, you know, we, I mean, we have to do, it's almost too late because most of the properties have well, been, have been just one second. Trees I just, back in there. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, hard to go to the causeway with your binoculars or the town beach mm. and take a look. It's quite something. We have to do something about the LPOD. It's not working. Right. Yeah. No, oh, but I think it's more obvious right now, especially that the leaves are off. But it oh, it was. It That's is. absolutely the first time I saw it. And they, none of the trees that they, they're putting in more trees than they're taking away. So mm. ultimately, hopefully that screens again. Mm. It was, I mean, it was, it is worse now for sure, but it, I noticed it in the summer too. Oh, I yeah. did not. So. Yeah. I all right. Well, that's yeah. All so, all right. So, we had a. Did we vote on a? No, I just said. Okay. Motion. <laughs> okay. I, <also>. Kate. <laughs> Liz seconded it. I did. Okay. Hi, Kate. Hi, Liz. Hi, Marie. Hi, Wayne. All right. Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. You.